Hey class, I'm Mr Thornton, you've got 25 days until May and I'm going to help you succeed in your GCSEs. This lesson, exam equipment. Now is the perfect time to be making sure you've got all the equipment you need for all of your exams. It's no good relying on the school to provide it for you. You might be lucky enough that they do provide some for you, but you don't want to be the person who ends up having the pen which runs out halfway through the exam, having that pencil which someone else has ended up breaking all the lead in, having the calculator whose batteries are running down. Much better if you are providing your own equipment and that way you'll know that you can rely on it. Number one, you need to make sure you find a brand of pen which you can use, which is comfortable for you to use and which you can write legibly with. Being able to write clearly is very important. I previously taught a student who really should have been able to get an A. He was certainly very capable, but his handwriting was so bad that he very rarely managed to get better than a C on any of the mocks and he didn't manage to do better than that on his GCSEs either. You just couldn't read what he was writing. So you need a pen which you can write in legibly, something which you're comfortable with. And you need to make sure it's a black pen as well. Black is really important and pretty much all of the exam boards specify black ink on all of their exam papers. The reason for this is modern exam papers are normally scanned. They're scanned automatically by computer and then the questions are emailed or sent electronically out to the people who are marking those papers. If you're not writing in black ink, then you could well be making your answers more difficult to read, which is a really bad idea. You want to make it as easy as possible for the person marking your test paper to be able to give you the marks. So, black pen that you can write in clearly and legibly. When you've found a black pen which you can write in clearly and legibly, then what you need to do is get some more. Do not rely on just having one pen. As you know, pens run out, so get a few. I'd suggest three, four, even five identical pens. And you need to make sure that you keep those separate from the rest of your school equipment. You should not be taking those to school with you every day. Make sure that they are kept for special. They are going to be part of your exam toolkit. Next thing that you're going to need is a pencil case to put them in. And you can get a clear plastic pencil case. Uh, you can pick them up for around £1.50 to £2, depending on whether it's a short one or a longer one but you need to make sure that you've got one of those clear plastic ones so that it's one which you're allowed to take into the exam. Um, as I'm sure you're aware, you're not allowed to take in pencil cases which were opaque because they could have writing inside them. So, five pens and a clear plastic pencil case for a start. Every single written exam which you sit is going to need a black pen for a start, but there are other very common bits of equipment which you'll need in multiple exams, so these need to go in your pencil case as well. Firstly, you need a pencil. And I suggest, actually, because there's a possibility that you'll get one where the lead's broken inside it, I suggest you get a couple of these at least as well, maybe three. Don't get tempted to lend them out to people. Don't get tempted to skimp on this. Pens and pencils are relatively cheap bits of equipment. They probably sell them at your school. Make sure that you are well stocked because that minute, minute and a half where you've got your hand up in the exam waiting for an invigilator to bring you a replacement, that's time when you could be writing an answer. You can't afford to waste any of that time in the exam. That could be one mark, two marks. That can be the difference between you getting the grade you want and falling short. So make sure that you are properly equipped with those. Of course, your pencil is going to need a pencil sharpener as well. Make sure that you've tested it before you go into the exam. Some pencil sharpeners are pretty flimsy and rubbish. Get one which is actually going to do the job. You're also going to need a rubber to rub out any pencil marks which you might make, and you're going to need a ruler. A 15 centimeter one is probably going to be okay. I'd be inclined to suggest a 30 centimeter one though. Finally, as part of your core exam kit, you need a calculator. Remember, it is not just those maths exams where you're allowed a calculator that you should have one for. It's also going to be lots of other subjects. For example, in all of the science exams, you can expect to do calculations, particularly in physics. And so having a calculator then is going to be a huge use to you. It's not just science though. Quite often there might be calculations in other subjects, geography, design and technology, electronics, 
All of these might require that you need to do some sort of calculation. Make sure that you've got a calculator, make sure that it works even if you don't have a lot of light because sometimes exam halls are not very well lit and so a solar powered calculator can sometimes be a problem. You want one that's got a combined power supply, that's got a battery and a solar panel and make sure that you've used it plenty on lots of past exam papers before you have a go at it. You need to know how to use it. You can't be sat there in the exam trying to figure out the functions on it. So a calculator which is properly charged and working, which you know how to use. That along with pencils, pens, a ruler, a rubber and a pencil sharpener, all of those inside a clear plastic pencil case, that is your core exam kit. Every day that you have an exam, you are going to make sure that you have this pencil case. You're going to check the night before that you've put it into your bag and then you're going to check before you leave the house in the morning. That double check is only going to take you an extra 10 seconds, but it could save you real problems further down the line. It is massively important that this goes with you every single time. When I leave the house, I often check keys, wallet, phone. In addition to that, you are going to check pencil case. Every single time you sit an exam, you need that pencil case with you. It is your pencil case. There are many others like it, but that one is yours. It's your friend, it's your life. Without you, it's useless. And without it, you're useless. In addition to your new best friend, the exam pencil case, you also need to check this week with your teachers what other bits of subject specific equipment they might need you to bring to the exam. On the exam timetable, which I told you to make sure you get a copy of yesterday, what you need to do is write on there any additional bits of equipment that you need that day. Write it next to the exam. Write it on both the copies, the copy that's in your room and the copy that's in that shared area in your home where all of your family can see it. That way, you've got a much better chance of making sure you've got everything you need. Another thing which you might want to have in your exam is something to drink from. So, at least be thinking about getting some bottled water. Again, the rules are pretty strict on this. You'd need to make sure that there isn't any sort of label on there in most exams, but Having something to drink, just in case you've got a dry throat, it can help calm your nerves, it can help get you a little bit more focused. It's a good idea to at least think about where you can get something like that from a couple of days before the exam so that you're ready to take it in the exam on the day. One last point, I'd leave things like correction fluid, things like Tipex at home. Although you may want to cover up any mistakes which you've made, so long as you've just crossed them out, so long as you've made it clear to whoever's marking your paper that those are mistakes and you know they're mistakes, so just one neat line through them, so long as it's clear, you aren't going to have any sort of problem with the examiner looking at those. But if you're sat there waiting for some correction fluid to dry, and that can take a couple of minutes out of your time, then you might have a problem. Or alternatively, you might have got a perfect answer on one side of the page and you might have put correction fluid on the other side of the page and when you close the two together, you end up putting correction fluid that hasn't dried properly yet over the correct answer. So, get rid of it. Leave it totally out of your exam pack. You don't need it. I hope that video really helped you. If it did, it really helps my channel when you like, subscribe and share these videos. Let people know I'm going to succeed in my GCSE. All the links and info for this video are in the description and please let me know what you thought in the comments or on Twitter at MrThorntonUK or use the hashtag SucceedInMyGCSE. There are loads more GCSE science videos on my channel too. Here's another one which YouTube thinks you might find useful. You can click my picture just here to subscribe, click down there to check how well you understood with the Snap Quiz website and app, and you can click just here to get my revision guides. Good luck in your GCSEs everyone, and thanks very much for watching.